All right, so we're back with Leslie in Jacksonville, Florida, um, and we're going over a review of a new bilge pump that he just bought for his 30-foot boat that's over here in the St. Johns River. Uh, it is an Atwood Sahara II, uh, MK Mark II. Mark II. Um, and I guess this is one of the newer ones. I've got the Mark I that's pretty highly rated uh, from people, and this is one of the newer ones out. Um, so what's your experience with this? Why is there some brown stuff here? Uh, yeah, so... Um, I bought the Sahara Mark II thinking it'd be a great replacement for an old rule that uh, broke um, previously. I just need to do a little replacement. This Mark II is great. I liked it because uh, I don't have the bottom piece that is still in the boat, but you're able to remove the bottom filter and the hose mount to the build so you can leave all the piping in place and remove this pump body. So that's a great improvement. That's what my old uh, rule had. Um, and I was like, okay, this is this seems like a direct replacement. Um, I left it in. Uh, I was running a dehumidifier just for a day or two, just to you know dry out the boat a little bit. I was gonna do a little bit of work. I come to find out that the pump no longer works, and I was like, oh, this is this this sucks. So I was like, this the whole idea I bought this 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 Sahara was because it had this an integral float switch, and everything seemed to work. So this is you know the old fashioned integral float switch versus one with a electronic sensing float switches. I noticed. Uh, for some reason, those don't seem to work as well. So I went with the old-fashioned integral float switch, um, and then we pulled the we pulled the pump out. I hooked it up to my my um, my power source, and it didn't work. And I was like, "Huh, that's weird." I then, you know, wired it uh, to the force pump on um, bilge, and it seemed to work fine. I was like, "Okay, that seems very strange." Um, I started doing a little bit more exploring and we kind of shake it a little bit and there was a lot of brown water coming out of it for some reason. Don't know why, but my, my sense of working on a lot of electronics, like this brown water smelled a lot like blown electronics. So I was like, oh, let's just push a little bit and open it up. And when I opened it up, I found out the contactor. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe we get some better light here. Let me use my phone too. You can see that the contactors rusted away and it no longer exists. So there's no longer an automatic float switch in here. And it seems like this is not a submersible pump. The original Mark I, or it was just called the Sahara pump, was a submersible pump. Um, it was sealed. This does not seem to be a submersible pump. There's no documentation saying it isn't, but or it's it a is, bilge pump. But it's a bilge pump, so yeah, I so assumed it, yeah. because the, it was the Mark II, the new and improved version, that would also be submersible. So, um, I guess knowing this information, I probably won't put this same pump in that situation. I'll go make sure that I buy a truly submersible pump. But uh, if if you guys buy the similar pump and you expect it to be submersible, maybe I would probably use a different. Uh, Use a different pump. Okay. Awesome. So don't buy it. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Uh, Alrighty. Atwood, do better.